everybody. Um, yeah, sorry there's no chat stream today, but um, most of you know what's going on. And by the late afternoon, I'm just wiped out. So it's just as well I just have this go up ASAP. So um, yeah, I'll have if I'm feeling good, then probably on Friday I'll be in the chat. But uh, I see the doctor tomorrow, and I'll find out when I get the 22 stitches out. So uh, let's uh, keep on going. Yeah, uh, for legal reasons and legality nonsense, yeah, remember I am a clairvoyant, clairaudient psychic. I don't use cards. I don't use crystals. Uh, someone said something, and I am not a practicing medium. But uh, as a clairvoyant, clairaudient, everything is for entertainment purposes only. Please uh, check the box for the full disclaimer. Uh, I have a tip jar in there along with uh, the buy me the coffee link also. So, hey, uh, let's go from there. Um, it's, I have been getting a lot of newer viewers and some people have asked some questions uh yeah the evil empire that i refer to is the government of that's ruling tehran and iran uh this all popped up during uh, 1979 when iraq kicked out the ayatollah khomeini and he went back to tehran and basically kicked out the shah and all hell broke loose. And that's the evil empire, the Jihad Joes that want to take over the world. And yes, any, um, and the Jihad Joes are in collusion, in my opinion, from the information I have received from the universe. Um, yeah, the DNC uh, supports the evil empire. I mean, just look at what every Democratic president of the United States, all of their actions have supported the Jihad Joes. Most recently, take a look at, um, uh, I mean, Barry had uh, JoJo hand over everything that was in uh, Kabul and Afghanistan. And even just recently, Barry sent his mouthpiece blinking over to the middle east and they're blinking's like oh it's such a humanitarian crisis i'm like bull crap they say they want the u.n to kick in more stuff over there but you know what all the u.n is doing is it hands everything directly over to the evil empire's tentacle called hamas yeah, Hamas deliberately, the sub-basements of all the quote-unquote hospitals, those are their military bunkers. This is their standard operating procedure. And now certain mullahs over in the um, UK are having fits because they're seeing all these queers for Palestine. And they're basically going, idiots, we don't want your support. Keep going. Because we're going to teach you how to be how to be Superman off the top of a tall building. You're going to be told to uh, uh, fly. Oh, gosh. Hold on. Hold on. Sorry, some spam phone call. Oh, we're my name is such and such. We're going to be in your neighborhood. We want to give you a free estimate on a new roof. <laughs> I live in an apartment, idiot. It's called, I asked him where he got my number from, and he said, oh, public records. I go, well, then uh, whoever read the public records needs to be re-educated. So, of course, they hang out. As soon as you get snarky with them and call them out, these spam callers disappear. But what was I saying? Yeah, it's, um, yeah, Barry says, has blink in his mouthpiece over in the Middle East, and uh, yeah, the mullahs are having fits because the gays are supporting Palestine. It's just, just turning into a giant crap show. 
Oh, I'll get more on that later on. Um, yeah, when I got up this morning, I slept kind of late, which, hey, I need. Um, so when I turned on the morning news, like the first thing was a public interest. It was, uh, they were announcing who the Chicago Spelling Bee champion is. And I'm like, okay, whatever. And, um, they said, oh, what, what, what was the word that this child won with? It was myocarditis. I'm like, how ironic. They are giving the list of like, what is it, two to 4,000 words to these spelling bee kids. And the word that the child won with, myocarditis. I guess they do need to understand and know what that word is because so many people have gotten the whatchamacallit into their arm. And they need to know what the word means when one of their friends drops dead on the playground. That's really a sad state of affairs because a lot of people are now being, they're finding out that the correlation between people having extreme cardiac issues, um, all the stuff started once they got the unknown liquid put into their body. It's uh, pretty sick, pretty sick out there. And speaking of medical stuff, yeah, we're all hearing all over the news how um, allegedly someone got into Princess Catherine's medical records. Well, a lot of people, I mean, talk to anyone who works in a hospital and there are people with so many, from so many departments that are able to access someone's hospital chart. I mean, the kitchen, the dietary dietitians that have to prepare meals for the patients they can access the medical records to make sure that they're not sending anything that would be an allergen or something if they're dietary, religious dietary restrictions. So allegedly it could have been somebody who works in the kitchen, one of the dietitians, nutritionist, nutritionist physical therapist, PT, because you know, if you're laying if your body is staying in one spot for too long, for too an extensive period of time, you can develop bed sores. So of course, somebody from the physical thera therapy department did view Princess Catherine's hospital notes so they could assist her in moving her body after surgery so she wouldn't develop a bed sore or a blood clot. I mean, yeah, I've been told even after my surgery to keep the weight off of my foot as much as possible, but don't stay stagnant. It's okay to get up and move around, and I should be getting, be moving around at least once every six to eight hours. So yeah, I have been doing that. So I can understand what and how many departments have access to Princess Catherine's medical records. Housekeeping, they need to know when a patient is possibly going for physical therapy, so that's when they can go in, clean the room, the bathroom, change the linens. Nursing staff, even medical students who are studying that procedure that she had done. So it couldn't be just one or two people. It could be hundreds of people who seized an opportunity to look at Princess Catherine's medical records. Yes, they probably had it under an assumed name. I mean, you couldn't go in there and find Catherine Wales or Catherine Mount 
Benton Windsor or Catherine Middleton, but they probably used a pseudonym, a nun de plume, to hide the records in the system. But hey, in a small private hospital, people talk. I know back from way back when, I do know what nun de plumes, certain rock and rollers, check into hotels under. No, I'm not going to say who they are or what they use, but hey, it's it's out there. So it's people lay off and now they have all these speculative things. It's like going, oh my gosh, uh, that was a body double scene at Windsor Farm Store. I'm like, nobody looks fantastic after surgery. Right now I am seven days out this time last week last wednesday it's what 11 36 a.m i was actually in an operating room under general anesthesia and i'm basically making a point of not putting on the war paint so this is how i'm looking seven days out so imagine how Catherine must have been looking and feeling seven days out and hers was much more extensive so they got to lay off. And yes, I haven't been wearing my rings because my fingers at different times of the day swell. And I don't want to have to go and have somebody cut them off of my hand. So that could be another reason why you don't see Catherine wearing her engagement ring or her wedding rings or the inter eternity band that William gave her as a push present. So that's a possible reason then very plausible why she isn't wearing her rings. They may have made up a, a secondary wedding, gold wedding band in a larger size to accommodate the swelling. So that's why you only are seeing maybe a wedding ring, the wedding, a wedding ring, but people just need to lay off it. But of course, these stupid gossip channels, I mean, caught a glimpse of one and they're saying oh the top 10 reasons why Catherine is no longer around and then you're seeing more nonsense coming out of the uh, California cuties abode and one of the latest ones is like oh yeah Charles revealed Diana's will and everything's to go to Henry okay folks uh Diana and Charles had been divorced for a year when she passed away. Diana had her family named as the executor, executors of her last will and testament, not Charles. So whatever Charles releases, that's speculative because he does not have the legal authority to display it. Okay. I mean, if Charles Spencer or Lady Sarah or Lady Jane says something, that you can uh, accept as reliable, but something coming from a non-entity of the Spencer family, I think you need to take that with about a two-ton grain of salt. And, of course, we're, many are waiting to find out what will be revealed with the Freedom of Information Act that the Heritage Foundation is pushing. Yeah, they're pushing to find out what's going on with uh, good old Henry. But at the same time, I mean, I even... Yesterday when I was laying around, yeah, I got a call from a friend who is a member of the Heritage Foundation, and we were kind of laughing. I said, you know, instead of... Uh, just Henry on this stuff. Why don't you also get the records of uh, that idiot out of Minnesota? Yeah, that Ilan Omar. So tag her name into the Freedom of Information Act to find out her immigration papers and status. I mean, we know she hates America and she loves Somali, Somalia. So why don't we dig out her shit and send her right on back, deport her? I mean, she's one of these stupid ass, they call them squatties. Okay, I think they're also part of the Sussex squad. All they want to do is destroy America. Yep. 
Yeah, get uh, include Ilan Omar from uh, the Congress idiot. Yeah, idiot Ilman in the same court documents as uh, Henry Mountbatten Windsor. And I think it would open a lot of eyes. Now, okay, yeah, I'm wearing a red sweater today. It's comfortable, lightweight, and soft. Um, something I I did put it up. I put a poll up on uh, X Elon's platform, and I noticed we've got several more um 24 primaries coming up here in the states yesterday was the illinois primary and of course when i went over um i'm okay i'm not looking good and when i have to go out of the house i have to use the crutches basically so nobody bumps into me so when i walked into the doors of the polling place it's it's you could tell i'm obvious in dis discomfort this idiot Barry goes, oh, you have to wait here, right by the doors. You can't go up to the table yet. And I looked at him. I'm like, you know, right now, I'm a disabled person. And this is getting extremely uncomfortable. So then finally, an idiot sat down at the table. Her name tag read Susan, and she was wearing a white shirt with flowers printed on it. So I handed her, not my driver's license, but my FOID card, Firearms Owner Identification, which is a lot harder to get than an Illinois state ID or driver's license, okay? And she's like, oh, is this your last name? I go, isn't, can't you read? Isn't reading comprehension one of the prerequisites to be an election judge? And she just kind of like, oh my God. And then they try to hand me the stupid cover to cover my ballot. I said, no, Gene Kaczmarek fucked up on those because they don't even cover one side of a ballot. It should be larger than the ballot and a bifold so you can hide it from everybody. Why are you giving me that piece of shit when it's not worth it? It does, doesn't do its job. And they're like, totally, totally shocked. And then they give you these pens that have stickers on them that you can't even write with. I said, this is ridiculous. I need a different pen. All they did was hand me another big pen. I could have brought my own pen in. Because you have to fill in the little box. And then when I took it to the counter machine, I go, gee, is this actually going to be counted? Or is some little Democrat demon hacker going to change my vote? And they're like, uh, 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 uh. I'm like, yeah. I know that the county clerk is in the back pocket of the DNC to flip votes. Yeah, it's, it's ridiculous, but it's Illinois. And I try to, whenever I have to go vote, I make it an effort to make every single demon quack as uncomfortable as possible. I can't wait. We're supposed to be running a new uh, congressperson for this district, so I can't wait to get in front of uh, Dumbo Delia's face. I mean, she's like, oh, my husband's a dreamer. Well, A, she's an anchor baby. Her mother literally was cross, is a wetback, and crossed the Rio Grande to drop the kid here in the States, so the kid would be quote unquote, an American citizen. Her husband is an illegal. And yeah, this is Congress per Congress idiot Delia Ramirez. And now we've got Dickwad Durbin making speeches about how the dreamers are being persecuted. Well, you know what? Those idiots, as soon as they hit their 18th birthday, they could have gone and filed the paperwork to be U.S. citizens. Don't drag it out till you're having problems with going to college. You know your parents brought you here illegally. You went to schools on the U.S. dollar. And allegedly in high school, you were taught all the stuff about citizenship. 
Well, while you're in high school, you should have gone down to your guidance counselor and started filling out the paperwork to be a U.S. citizen. Don't go crying and whining to dickwad or duckworthless here in Illinois. Can't handle it? Don't want the responsibilities of being a U.S. citizen? Hey, go back to your country of origin. I mean, that's even getting... Even now in New York City, there are all these people from West Africa heading to Harlem. Well, the established residents of Harlem in that neighborhood in New York City are having fits because it's now turned into two rival groups, the Americans and the West Africans. They actually hate each other. I have a feeling the Americans need to stand up and kick those idiots back to the country of origin. And it is. It's making noise. It's making noise on the Internet. How uh, the real Americans have zero tolerance. I mean, hey, these idiots are coming from West Africa. Where? In, because they say they want a better life. How much money did they spend uh, to get across the Atlantic Ocean into Central America and uh, on their walk north to cross into the U.S.? That amount of money could have changed their own life back in their country of origin. So why are they wasting the money why aren't they using the money to better their own life back over on the African continent? Instead, they're spending it to come to the U.S. to make a mess. So I'm getting a feeling that these North African, West Africans, <clears throat> they're all a member of the Jihad Joe Army. They're being paid to come over here and cause upset. Yeah, I mean, there's... Already, I, I, when I had to go pick up something the other day, I, um, I was in one of the grocery stores and that has a very large halal uh, section of foods. And I overheard a conversation and, um, uh, I didn't confront the person, but they were in the Abaya style of dress with the niqab and the hijab. And I'm like, she's going, we're so happy that we're here because our family and friends, um, we have to send canned goods over because, and we have to send it through a certain route because um, of all the positive stuff the Houthis are doing. Yeah. The um, Yemenites, which, hey, back in my day, back in the 70s, the joke was uh, you could smell a Paki from a, a block away, but you could smell the Yemenite a mile off. So, yeah, they're very proud of the Yemenite Houthis. Um, basically, targeting all the cargo ships that are going through the Gulf there and up the Red Sea. And they're saying, oh, uh, yeah, there's going to be ships coming down with uh, aid for Gaza and this and that. And I'm like, well, nothing's coming north through the Red Sea and the Suez because you're idolizing the Houthis. Well, yeah, we are. Hey, folks, we are in World War Three. Just everybody's too much of a chicken shit to admit it. Yeah. Jihad Joe's. Yeah, I'd say they're equal to Hitler's band of brothers. First they're going after the Jews, then they're going to go after the Christians. Isn't that what Hitler and his friends did? If you didn't agree with their ideology, everybody was dumped into a camp. Well, the evil empire doesn't want to waste money on camps. They're just going to waste somebody away immediately. That's their ideology. And if somebody ends up 
unalive through it, then they're considered a martyr and praised to all end because they made the ultimate sacrifice for Allah. They're just such a piece of crap. And now the evil empire is throwing temper tantrums because the country of India has now made massive changes to on how to become a citizen of the country of India. You see, if you're a non-Muslim, if you belong, if you're Jewish, Christian, Sikh, Buddhist, I mean, if you follow any other religion aside from the evil empire of Allah, you only have to wait five years. Yeah. But if you're a Muslim, uh, only after 11 years of residency can you start the application process. You see, India recognizes the fact of how evil empire countries treat those who aren't praying five times a day. Yeah. October 7th it was just a preview of what they want to do worldwide. Yeah, so, hey, if India can change their federal laws to say, hey, if you're a non-Muslim, you can become a citizen within five years, but the Muslims have to wait 11 years plus and be thoroughly vetted, I think that's something we have to start doing here in the United States. But, of course, we've got to so many liberal shitheads, and, of course, we've got Barry the Muslim running the country. Yeah, he was raised, what, Indonesia? Muslim country? Yeah. Some of my neighbors are religious refugees from uh, one of those island nations that is primarily Muslim because they're Catholics. We basically were funded by uh, Billy Graham's college, Wheaton College, to come to the United States. And yeah, they have to follow their shithead teachings, but it's kind of, I talked to the dad who's Roman Catholic, and he's like, where's the nearest Catholic church? And I told him, hey, it's three blocks away. It's right around the corner. So he's like, thank you, and they're Christian. And he found out, he goes, okay, I have to work on Sundays and Saturdays when they normally have mass, but he found out that, hey, uh, every day the, they offer mass at a very early time in the morning, so he fulfills his obligation by going in the early mornings to Catholic mass. They got out because they were being, uh, their lives were being threatened because they weren't following the Jihad show ideology. Oh, now some other stuff that I caught before I uh, started filming. I guess Tony Fauci's going to be having a sniff fit because some scientists found out a way to kind of like isolate and remove the HIV, the HIV virus stuff out of human cells. Well, yeah, Fauci made a, made a lot of money on his uh, evil medication called AZ, AZT. So now he's going to be like, oh, my God, I have to find some way to counteract this new discovery. And, of course, we know Fauci made a, another boatload of fortune with a remdesivir. And yet people who have lost people, family members, allegedly due to lung issues, make sure you check the uh, medical records. Make sure that they weren't uh, given a serious dose of remdesivir that causes the organ shutdown. Yeah, we got to make sure. I mean, yeah, the FDA, hey, I'm going through this. I had to go through this surgery because the, F, because the stupid government normally to handle the pain levels 
I would get just an epidural injection. Spinal nerve blocks, you get two of them basically 10 days apart. And those run about 3,000 bucks each. No. The FDA, the Food and Drug, the government oversight, because I'm on the American equivalent to the NHS, they said, no, you're not going to be able to get those nerve blocks. Instead, we'll approve this surgery. Well, I'm like... I know having to go into, just to go into an OR, that's basically $10,000 because you contaminate it. And it's 10 grand to resanitize. And the fact that I had to have general anesthesia, all this other stuff, um, I and a few friends were figuring, we all put down how much money it would it's going to cost the government. And I'm saying about 42000 So the government, foolish, wasteful spending, instead of spending like six grand, they're upwards between thirty and 60000 which I think is so stupid. But hey, it's Barry Obama playing God with people's lives. Exactly. That's what's going on here in the States. Yeah. And yeah, he's still sending money over to uh, the Big Red Sea. He's going to come up with a new uh, uh, a new virus so people have to get more unknown toxic liquids in, in, put into their bodies. Yeah, keep your eyes open. Keep your eyes open, especially now that we're in the middle of primary season. And I did contact one of the gals I know down in Florida who's a congressperson, and I'm like, hey, yeah, for the remaining primaries that are coming up, all of us who are real Americans, let's start wearing red on every single primary day nationwide. Even if it's the donkeys, we're still going to wear red in support of the real Americans and the real patriots. So I've got the dates on when they're all popping up. So thank goodness I've got enough red sweaters and t-shirts and stuff like that. And it, I think we should make our voices known. This is a quiet way of protesting. Remember the suffragettes uh, back in the, back between what, 1910 to when women got the vote worldwide? Women would wear purple and green in support of women's suffrage. So right now, I think everyone should be pulling out their red, uh, red T-shirts and stuff and wear those on every single day where there's a primary election, a caucus, or a committee meeting. Yeah, let's do it. I mean, I'll put the link down in the comments of where you can find out when all the primaries are. And speaking of Congress and idiots, uh, I guess today, this morning, there's a big uh, meeting, uh, the House Oversight Committee on the Biden family business. Uh, I guess Hunter's buddy buddy is there singing like a canary, but none of the Biden family members are showing up guess they're trying to hide more evidence. There's way too many people who are going to start singing to save their own ass. Big time. Big time people are, are finding a way. So, so yeah. Um, it's, oh, the other thing, the other person that's uh, doing some shit to save his own ass is that dude in Ireland. Uh, Leo Vedrakar, whatever, the prime minister, basically he resigns until a new one is elected. Basically he's saying, I'm not going to run for office and he wants out of politics for his own personal reasons. Well, the dude's gay. And basically Ireland has turned into the EU dumping ground. And, uh, I bet he's going to get his health, 
get his ass out of Ireland because he knows that the Jihad Joes are going to make him a target because he's gay. And Jihad Joes don't like people who uh, prefer relations with members of their same sex. Kind of funny, isn't it? Because Ireland is allegedly a very Roman Catholic country. But they're allowing themselves to be turned into a big pod of the evil empire. People just don't get it. So, hey. Uh, I've been rattling on now for about 30-odd 30, 30 minutes. So, um, uh, yeah, another video will go up on Friday. Sorry there's, there's no chat today, but hey, uh... I am take, trying to take it easy, so uh, I'll be talking with talking to you. More views, more opinions, psychic opinions will be up on Friday. And those of you that keep telling me to go look at this person or that person, okay, FYI, okay, card readers, I mean, anybody can pull cards. You can use a simple everyday deck of playing cards. You can pick them up at a dollar pound shop. They were, so it's their psychic interpretation of what the cards are telling them. And you could give the same spread to 10 different card readers and you'll get 10 different interpretations. So the person who said that Henry is the reincarnation of the Duke of Windsor, Sweetie, nope. I've had private discussions with about a half a dozen other psychics. We've all come to the same conclusion of who Henry Mountbatten Windsor is the reincarnation of. And it's definitely not the Duke of Windsor. And who they called out as Rachel's the reincarnation of? Ah. Eh. Wrong! Big mistake. Big mistake. Because a lot of these chicky poos that are going up pulling cards, they're little girls. I've been calling stuff out since I was four years old. So basically, I've been voicing my psychic... My psychic... Uh, information for well over 50 years. Yeah. I started telling guys who were going off to Vietnam who were drafted whether or not and I'd, see, I'd say no, uh-uh. He's not going to play soldier. He's not going to be playing army boys. He's going to jail. That guy ended up being a guest of the Hanoi Hill one. So I've been calling stuff out since I was four years old. I've been doing this a lot longer than a lot of these women have been alive. And I can get people who are older than me who can verify what I've been saying. So, okay. I don't need, a, I don't need cards. I don't need crystals. I don't need to hold somebody's piece of jewelry. All I need to do is focus for a little bit. And yeah, I have learned how to turn it on and off. So, uh, catch it on Friday. If I feel up to it, yeah, there'll be a chat. If I'm not feeling up, I'm just tossing, tossing this straight up. But this weekend, yeah, I will be, I will be live. Okay. And this upcoming weekend, yeah, it's going to be, what day is it? calendar. Yeah, um, and the 23rd, tw um, no, the 24th, Palm Sunday, I will be doing my live stream. Okay, so I'll probably just toss the video up on Friday, and then the 24th at 1 p.m. Central Standard Time will be the live chat, and I hope everybody can join us. Okay, I'll Everyone have a great evening. Uh, look for the video on Friday. Bye-bye.